guys, it's May May, and check out this beautiful paper from Graphic 45, and it was sent to me by Terry Tullis, and I hope I said your last name correctly, Terry, but I appreciate this so much. She actually contacted me and asked me if I would be willing to do a mini album with one of these packs of papers. She would send it to me, so I chose the sport one because I've never had that, and she sent me these also. What? I'm just so spoiled. You guys spoil me so bad, so we're going to play with this sport thing one today. By the way, in case you're wondering, this one is um, Once Upon a Springtime, which is absolutely gorgeous. And this one is Sweet Sentiments. And I think I have Sweet Sentiments somewhere, but I used a lot of it. And this one I've never had. And you guys have been asking me about a bridal-themed thing. I wonder if this would work for that. We'll look and see about that. So I'm going to use this sport-themed paper. Let me take it out of here so it doesn't have such a glare on it. I think Graphic 45 paper is beautiful. And I want to show you what all she sent me in here. Um, it comes with all these... Um, uh, stickers here. So we've got those to use. It comes with the paper pad and she also sent me all of these pieces, the chipboard and everything. And I'm going to look and see if I can find a link to this to leave below for you guys in case you're looking for it. I will do my best. Look at this paper. It is stunning. And if you don't know this about me, I have four boys and I think that this is going to be perfect for a boy themed album. So I decided I wanted to do paper bags and you ever just had a reason to just do a mini album? on the hurry <laughs> like maybe you need a gift for like tomorrow well hopefully today this is going to be the answer for you so i had this little stack of black paper bags this is actually all i had left and i really wanted to make this mini album and i got to thinking i really can't use black with these kind of papers but i want to show you something they do see how the black is in here and i thought if they can do it i can do it so that's what we're going to do so these little paper bags let me get the measurement for you because i'm not exactly sure what they measure they are oops use the ruler right they are six and three quarters by three and a half so I just bought these at I think these are Michaels and they have the craft coat on the inside which I really love and listen I'm gonna make this bag so super easy because I want to make this where this is something you guys can do if you need it for a gift no. now to assemble the mini album I want to make these single pocket pages as they sit with these little folds in here, they can be two pockets because you can put a tag in both sides of this fold. But I don't want that. I feel like that leaves my album a little bit loose and my tags can fall out. So here's what we're going to do. To make this happen, the first thing I'm going to do is take this gusseted part or this little part where the bottom of the bag is, which I'm not going to use in my mini album. It's going to be where my binding goes. I'm going to fold this over and make myself a crease mark on that bag. That's really just to give me a line or a guide for when I do this second part. Now I'm going to open this bag up and this is that crease line that I made. That was just so I can see how far to cut. I'm going to cut into this bag on the side. Do not panic. You can do this. It's just a paper bag. So I'm going to take these scissors and run in right down this fold edge. I'm going to slice to that fold that I made for myself, that little guide line. So you can see where I've cut and I'm going to do that on both sides. So that side and this side. This will still be an easy album. I just want to make this one little adjustment for me. You don't have to do this. I've basically cut this piece away down to that first little fold we made for ourselves. Now what I want to do is I want to come to this side and slice up right along the fold line that we already created. We're going to do this again, so don't worry. If you're not catching it this time, we're going to do this one more time together. And I'm going to show you what this does. Okay. So basically, I have opened my bag out like this, okay, basically cut down to that gusset, and I have this flap here, okay. Now I want to show you, I'm going to close this down again to show you what I mean by that fold line. This is the portion of the bag we're going to use for the uh, binding, so this is the portion that will be the part that gets the tags. Now, I'm going to move this out of my way. I'm going to fold this guy down and fold this guy down, and I'm going to seal this shut. I'm going to run some wet glue right along here just to seal him down. And this won't be the only glue I put down, so it doesn't have to be, you know, perfect in there. Just enough to get that started. Okay. Then I'm going to glue all of this down. So using my glue, 
This time, this will be my final gluing, so I want to make sure I get plenty of glue. And I'm using my art glitter glue. I think it works perfect for these kind of projects, and it dries quick enough, and I love it. So I'm going to use that. Now I'm just going to take this flap and seal it down on top, just like that. So here's what I've basically done. I've basically created a one-flap paper bag. See that? So instead of having the two flaps, like this one, I have one. Now, if you have any of those glassine bags, or they make bags that are like this where you don't have the doubles, but you know me, I'm going to dig into my stash and use what I've got. Now, you cannot tell that I have cut that and adjusted it. You just really can't. And once it's decorated, you really can't tell it. So let's do one more together. So this is the bag in its original state, okay? We're going to get rid of these two folds. Here's what we're going to do. Fold this little piece over. Just to, This is just giving us a guideline of where to cut without having to make any marks. So now I know how far down to go. Now I'm just going to take these scissors and stick them into the side. And we're basically just opening up this bag on the fold. And I'm only going to cut down to my fold line, which is right there. So that's where I cut to, and when this folds down, you can see that meets, okay? Now I'm going to do the other side. Make sure you're cutting the same gusset out or opening up on the same gusset. I'm using the one to the front. Cut to my fold line, okay? Then let's open the bag up. You might want to open it ahead of time if, you, if your bags are stiff like these. I probably should have, but I didn't. Now then... From my cut line back, I'm going to slice right there. Stick the scissors in and slice right to the other fold on both sides. Okay, now I can just open this out just like this and I can shut this down and fold that back. This is how we'll get this going kind of quick. Run some glue along here. Just like so. Seal this down. Glue this page. Shut. And then seal this flap on top. Like I said, just because I want a single pocket and not two, that's just how I came up with... Oops, let me let my glue dry. Hold <laughs> on, push it down. That way, I can have the one pocket instead of the two flaps. So I'm going to do that to all of them. If you need to go back and watch that, just go watch it a couple times. I'm going to do that to all eight of my bags, and then we'll get ready to put them together. While I'm right here, this is the last bag I have to do. I want to show you something while I'm doing this one. Fold this back out of my way. If you wanted to, at this point, you could use one of these as a flap. If you wanted to make like a... Um, you could turn this into a pocket by just gluing this section and one little stripe right here to this piece. You see that? Then you've created this flap that you can then sandwich in some cardstock and have a little fold over flap if you want it for like a page that'll flip up. Just wanted to show you those are very useful flaps if you want to do them for that. Like I said, the album I'm making is kind of a quick, last minute, need a gift kind of album. And so, or just a pocket, you know, like your pocketbook album or something like that. And so I'm just kind of doing this kind of quick and easy. Now, I found that going ahead and do the cutting and then doing all the gluing at one time is an easier way to do this. So I just went ahead and cut all the bags and then glued all the bags. So there we go. So I have all eight of my bags all done. They are all cut. They're not laying correctly, but they're all cut. Okay, so... Now, I'm just, I have one pockets on each one of these, okay? And for me, that's just going to work better. Things won't fall out. Now, I want to get this ready to seal it shut. Now, here's something real important. To save myself some time, I'm not doing any fancy binding. I'm actually going to create a binding using just a couple pieces of chipboard and some twine. But I want to use this whole section as my binder, okay? And I don't want my tags to go deeper in. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to stop those from, because, you know, I don't know if you've noticed, but even though we cut this and glued it the way we cut it, this bag still goes all the way to this bottom because we didn't seal this shut in any way. You can glue this down while you're going, like go in there and put the glue, but I'm just going to show you a simple way to make sure your tags don't go too far. All right, the next thing I want to do is I want to glue this little flap down on all the bags. My reason for that is I just think this will help the bag stay together, the album stay together better, and we won't get any um, falling apart or accordioning. Uh, oh, that's a hard word to say. Any 
accordion looseness um, if we go ahead and glue this little flap down. It'll be inside, it'll be sealed up. When you see the end result, it'll, you'll understand what I'm saying, but I still think this will help us to keep this nice and clean. Some of my glue missed the spot there. No biggie, move that out of the way while it dries. And this is really just kind of a, just a, almost like just paper clipping it in place until we actually put it in place. I just wanna make sure it stays closed. This album, when it's when you see it completed, it might seem like a lot of steps while I'm explaining it, but once it's completed, you'll be like, oh, that wasn't so bad. That'll make sense. And I love these small bags. I think they're perfect for this. I'm thinking this will be good for a basketball album for my boys because they play basketball. So now I have all those sealed down, okay? Nice and tight. Now it's time to put this together. Before I do any gluing, because I am going to also glue this area, I want to do some hole punching. Let me show you what I mean. So before I go any further, I want to put some holes in here. And I told you I was going to do this in a way that would help to stop my tags from going too far. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to poke my holes really close to this little fold, really close to where that edge is we just glued down. The reason is I'm going to run twine through here. And once I do that, that'll be like a stopper for my tags and they won't go into that open hole. So I'm going to use my crop doll And you know on the side it has this little dial so you can set it to whatever depth you want it. I'm going to see how deep I want that to go in there. I think something like that. And it's even got little measurements on the side, so I'm going to slide this up to three quarters of an inch and then twist that shut. So now what I can do is use my crocodile as how deep to take the hole, right? And I can use this edge as where to line up the edge of the hole punch. So on both sides, I'm going to get the same hole. And that's what I'm looking for. So I'll go like this. And then like this. Now, if you don't have a crop and where you can line it up and all that good stuff, just use a pencil and make a mark where you want it. And then when you do your second ones, just line them up like this and poke right through them. Now, I'm going to do multiple bags, I think. I'm pretty sure this crop and will do two at once. Get these nice and lined up. Use that crocodile measurement to my advantage. Yeah, two is good. Keep them nice and lined up. There we go. I just want to get this part out of the way so that I know I have my holes punched before I start gluing things together. Because I wouldn't be able to go through all of this even with my crocodile. Okay, so I have all my holes punched and they are ready to go. Now I want to um, go ahead and cut the chipboard pieces I need for here. Basically, and you've probably seen these online, this look is very, um, I've seen it in several places, where you basically seal the album down here and then this is your actual album portion. This is going to be our binded area, or a bound, <laughs> let's use English properly, our bound area. So I'm going to cut some chipboard to fit just here and I'm going to measure that little base of the bag and see how much, what size chipboard I need. So two inches, is it three and a half? Yep, two by three and a half. So let me get some chipboard and do that real quick. So here's my pieces of chipboard. This is actually some matte board. Y'all know I use that nice, heavy, thick matte board that's used for like matting photos. And I love this stuff. So that's what this is. And let me show you what's gonna happen. Once I get these all assembled together, these pieces will sit on top here and become the basically book binding for this album. See how that's gonna look? There'll be holes and there'll be twine, but that's where we're going with that. So before I do that, I wanna cover these with paper. So let's choose some paper. This is another thing I like about this album. We get to go to paper fast. We don't have to do a whole bunch of stuff before we get to play with the paper. And let's just see. Gonna flip through. If this takes me too long, I'll cut away. Oh, nope. <laughs> I'm in love with this stripe paper. I'm gonna use the stripe for it. Okay, so let me get this out of the album. Look at this, this is perfect for the binder of this book. Okay, so here's what I like to do. I'm gonna flip the page over, keeping my stripes where I want them, and I'm gonna glue these down into the corner just like this and then cut it away. That's just how I do this. I'm using my art glitter glue. You can take your trimmer and cut the pieces to the right size and all that good stuff first and just stick them down, whichever way works for you. And then I'm gonna just slide this into this corner just like so, making sure that's right everywhere. Lovely. Now I'm gonna do the second one. Now that I've got those glued down, I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife and just cut them away. 
Isn't that super easy to do it that way? I think it is. Now, you can um, take a file and file these nice and smooth. I'll show you. I don't have a file in here, but I do have some of this um, sandpaper. This is from Close to My Heart. It's one of their distress kits. I'm just going to run it around the edge. What I like to do this for is it makes that paper kind of seal to the edge without having any edges hanging over. So it doesn't take a chance of ripping away. Now, if you're going to do any inking, this would be the place to do that, to go ahead and get your ink done. I don't want to do, I like that white kind of showing on the edge, so I think I'm not going to ink. But now it's also time to poke your holes into this, and we're going to do it just like we did before. Remember, this is cut exactly the same as a, the bottom of our bag, so I'm going to be able to use my crocodile to just line this up just like I did and poke that hole. Perfect. This guy. Having that stop that you can set on the side of your crop dial is really convenient. Okay, so our holes are punched and we are ready to add this to our book. Before we do that, I'm going to do one more thing just as a precaution. And this may seem like overkill, but I'm going to glue each one of these together. I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to take my glue run it around here just like this and glue my bags together again just as a safety precaution to make sure everything stays together you don't want to do all this hard work and then have it fall apart just another little step the one thing i'm doing is making sure i'm gluing everything the same direction so i'm putting glue on the back of the bag and then flipping them over all in the same direction so as not to create extra bulk. If you turn these in a different direction, you might get a little bulky if you had them opposite, but I'm gluing the same pieces to the same pieces, if that makes sense. So now they're all glued together even without the binder going on there, but I'm ready to do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is glue my bind binding in place. So I'm gonna glue it down and then I'll come back and run the twine through it. So let's glue this nice and snug. I'm not going to skimp on the glue here because I really want this to stay in place. Line those holes up just like so. I'm going to flip it over and do the back side. Can you see how fast this comes together? Really fast. Really. I mean, that's basically the book and it's ready to decorate. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so because we're to that point, I'm ready to cut mats. So I need 16 mats so I can mat the front and the back of each one of these bags we created, okay, um, or we're using. I'm going to measure them. Now, these, this distance to this distance measures four and three quarters of an inch, but I don't want it to be from edge to edge. I'd like to have a little bit of a mat edge showing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these pieces down a quarter of an inch. So instead of cutting them at four and three quarters, I'm going to cut it at four and a half. And then on this side, I'm going to cut it at three and one quarter, just to give myself a little bit of the black edge showing. So four and a half by three and one quarter, 16 times. I'm going to use this paper because I've already cut into it. And then here's the cool thing about graphic 45 paper. Each page is two sides. So I don't have to have 16 sheets of paper. I just have to have eight pieces that are two sided because each of these sides will work. So I pulled out my papers and I went ahead and cut all of my mats all at one time. Now I know I don't want this stripe on the front because I have that on the front. I'm gonna go through and see which one is my favorite for the front. That's really super cute. Let's see, keep looking. Just pick what you like. That's cute too. I'm going to hold that one there for a second. Now that's one side. Now this is the cool thing. We can look at the other side as well. The other side, kind of the B side on these papers are more patterns. And I kind of like the photos more. Yep. So it's between these two. We've got to decide... I like this, but I think there's too much black in that one. It kind of blends in a little much, where this one kind of sits and pops. I think I'm going to go with this one, which is unusual for me because I typically wouldn't pick this one, but I'm going to. So I'm going to put some glue on the back of this page and put it to the front of our album. Put 
then remember I cut myself I cut this so that I'd have kind of an eighth of an inch of the black all the way around so just line that up and now without any embellishments that's the front of the album it's super cute and the pages turn like this see that now I'm going to go through and mat all these other pages exactly the same just picking the pages and putting them down and matting them all the way through so there we go all matted all the way through. I cannot tell you how fast this guy's coming together. Really fast. Now what I want to do is I want to create those tags that will go inside these single pockets that we created here. So these tags, I'll just cut them the same um, size as this area here so they'll go nice and flush. So I'll cut them at four and three quarters by three and it depends on how, how snug you want your tags. You can cut it right to three and a half and squeeze them in there. I'm gonna cut it back just about an eighth of an inch, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So I think I'll cut this three and three eighths, just so I'll have some room for them to slide in. So four and three quarters by three and three eighths. And I'm now I cut these in some craft cardstock and something I like to do just to make them slide in easier, although I think these are gonna go pretty easy because I cut them a little bit shy of what they needed to be. I'm going to round those edges at the bottom. You can see that's nice and snug in there. So I'm going to round the edges. And sometimes that helps take off some of the bulk. I'm going to use my half inch corner rounder. And I'm going to decide if I want to do the top and the bottom. Let me slide this in and see if this helps with the slide in. That's much better taking some of that bulk out. And see how it just goes right barely. It's got a little bit sticking out. I'm okay with that because we're going to put a tag on it. So if any of it sticks out, it's no big deal. But if it goes flush, Still no big deal, we're gonna put a tag. So let me round the bottoms of these real quick. I may end up rounding the top. That's one of those things you can just decide as you go. I think I am, because it seems a little unfinished to me. So I'm gonna round both bottom and top. I cannot tell you how fast this album comes together. You could literally make this the morning before a party if you had several, you know, two or three hours to get this one done, start to finish. Okay, so these are ready now to slide inside here, just like so. If I can line it up. So that's where these will all live. All eight of these will live inside of here and give us some more photo spots. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to mat all of these. I like to have a mat on both sides, and I'm going to use these. I'm going to do this in a solid color. This is where I like to not waste my printed paper because I feel like you know you can use this where people can see it, but I want to use solid color here. So now I got to dig through my stash and find some complementary color. So we're going to do basically the same thing here that we did earlier when we cut these. We're just going to cut these our mat pieces a quarter of an inch smaller than this. So I'm going to cut them at three and one eighth, and then I'm going to come this way and cut it at four and a half. So three and one eighths and four and one half. Now this may seem boring. I'm like, maybe I should use a navy or something, but I want to have this for photos. So I found this cream color that I think really works well with all the colors in the book. Can you see all those colors? I think it works good. So I'm going to use this cream color for my mat and I'm going to need to cut 16 of them to mat front and back of these. So as you can see, I have eight inserts and 16 photo mats, and they'll go on here just like this. And I think that'll be perfect because it leaves me room for color from my photos. And just imagine if I did the, the photos in sepia and kept this tone, I think that'd be really pretty. So now I'm just gonna glue all of these guys on, one on the front and one on the back of each one of our tags, our inserts. So do you remember my tab punch that was sent to me by my sweet friend? And I love this. This is this is how you guys spoil me so bad. I love this punch so much. This is the tab punch that when you punch it out and you fold it over in half, you get those tabs for your pages. Let me fold it in half real quick and show you. You get these adorable tabs. Love this. This is made by McGill, and I will see if I can find a link. I don't know if I can anymore. I don't know if it's out, out um, of what do they call it? I don't know if it's discontinued or not anymore, but let me show you what I do. I hold both hands on either side because it's kind of firm and I press pretty hard on both sides, but look at that perfect tab. And then, and by the way, these little scraps I'm using all came from when I was cutting the mat. So I'm just, I went straight to my scraps. I did not pull out any more paper. So we're still saving paper. 
Now these guys are ready to be folded and you just choose which side you want. I want this side. I'm kind of probably going to use more of the B sides for this because I want the pattern to show. So I think these will be super cute on the ends of our tags that are going inside. So now on the ends of my flaps here, I'm going to put some glue on one side of the tag, of the tab rather. I'm going to line it up. I'm just going to center them to make it super easy. Just kind of put that where I want it. I'm only sealing down the back at this point. Then I'll just open this out, put some glue on this side, and seal it down. These remind me of clipboards, and that's cool because in um, sports, you know, you have the clipboards where they keep score and things like that. So then these will slide right inside here, and our little tabs will stick out. Look how cute that is. Can you see that? Love it. Okay, I'm going to put these on every single one of these real quick. So there we go. I got tabs on every one, and I'm just sliding these into the little slots that we made. Just like this. So there we go. I got all the little tags put in, all the little tabs, slid those inside of our little pockets, and we're ready to start decorating this guy. I'm going to stop here so that if you want to do this with me, you can go ahead and get the assembly done. And then when we come back, we'll do our twine. We'll get ready for everything. We'll get ready for photos and all that good stuff. Hey, thanks guys for watching so much. I will see you on Friday and we will finish this little album up. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.